were murdered in Idaho. Father Stephen Gonzalez is now making some potentially bombshell revelations. He tells Fox that although the coroner says all four victims were stabbed, he doesn't think that his daughter Kaylee and her best friend died in the same way. He also says he believes both of them were targeted. Police have not named a suspect, announced any motive for the killings, or found any murder weapon. Joining us now is Phil Holloway, criminal defense attorney and former assistant district attorney. He's also a former police officer, so clearly he knows a lot about this and is uh, well qualified to speak to all of this. Phil, um, Steve Gonsalves, let's take this a piece at a time, first of all says he thinks that Kaylee and Madison Mogan were targeted because the killer entered the house through a second floor sliding glass door and then proceeded to go upstairs where his daughter and her friend were sleeping. What do you think? Well, good afternoon, John. Of course, this is heartbreaking. And look, there is no grief like the grief of a parent who has lost a child, certainly who's lost a child in this horrible fashion. And it's, it's natural for victims' families to get very frustrated. Those of us in the media, we're all frustrated because the police are just not releasing a lot. But we have to consider that this young woman's father uh, doesn't have really the, the picture of everything that the police have. They have to keep a lot of their information very close to the vest. They have to protect the integrity of their investigation, and that means they cannot release information like uh, what somebody's alibi might have been or what exactly they might have found inside the house. Because if you fast forward to next week or next month or next year when they have a suspect and they're interrogating that suspect, and if the person divulges information that has not been discussed here on television or out in the media, then they know that they're on the right track and they have the right person potentially in custody. So they've got to play this close to the vest. Steve Gonzalez acknowledged that the police weren't telling him a whole lot, but I guess he had maybe a combination of what he knew and a gut feeling as well, where he said that the deaths of his daughter and Madison Mogan did not match. He didn't elaborate, but here's what he said. Listen here. Their points of damage don't match. I'm just going to say it. It wasn't leaked to me. I earned that. I paid for that funeral. Sent my daughter to college to get an education. She came back in a box, and I can speak on that. Yeah, I sent my daughter to college to pay for an education. She came back in a box. Clearly, he is hurting, and his wife is hurting. The entire family is hurting. The families of the other three victims are hurting as well, and they are all frustrated. But, but what he said there, their points of damage don't match. It's, it sounds like he may have some information about the nature of the wound. He might, he might, he might have knowledge from, uh, you know, what a mortician or somebody might have told him or even showed him. But we have to consider that when you have four people that were involved in, you know, a vicious knife attack like this and that died, uh, we wouldn't expect all of their injuries to be the same. So what he said, while it's very interesting, we have to know the rest of the context to figure out what exactly it might mean. It might not mean anything, because when you have four people that receive stab wounds, they're going to have different injuries. Look at it like this. If a killer comes in that side door and starts attacking one person, and maybe that first person doesn't fight back, but it awakens the second person, and the second person does fight back, you're going to have very different injuries. So the fact that the points of damage, to use his words, don't match up, it's certainly interesting and it's heartbreaking uh, as a parent to just think about how he must come across that information. But I don't think that really tells us much about uh, what the police might know here, John. Yeah. Yeah. I still can't wrap my head, Phil, around the idea that you can kill four people with a knife in a house in such a brutal fashion, and two other people who are in the house at the time don't somehow get alerted to it. Um, as, as an investigator, as a former prosecutor, are you surprised that the police have not identified a suspect yet? Well, I don't know that they haven't. Maybe they have. This was well, a they haven't complex one. crime scene, and they've got one. a lot of information. And it, look, somebody was in that house from like 3 a.m. to possibly like 11 or 12 a.m. or 12 noon. So that's a long time for a person to uh, leave information at the crime scene. And by that, I mean leave evidence. There's going to be palm prints. There's going to be footprints. These bloody crime scenes are, are just full of forensic information. And it takes time. It takes lots of eyes to take a look at this stuff, to send it to crime lab, to get it analyzed, and to get it back to investigators so they can finish their work. They're going to solve this case, John. Oh, let, let's, let's hope you're correct on that point. Phil Holloway, good to talk to you. Thanks for your expertise. Appreciate it. You bet.